if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. So true. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. My, my, my. So true. So powerful. And so necessary for us to hear in this day and time. For we have too many Christians who are thinking that uh, are wondering why the world does not love them. Wondering why uh, the uh, world hates them. Wondering why the world does not want them in the public square anymore. Wondering why the world does not want to tolerate them. Wondering why the world wants to cut their heads off. Wondering why the world has turned against Christians and uh, are defending people with lifestyles that are totally contrary to God, to the Word of God, and nature itself. Amen, somebody. Well, I want to help you tonight by the grace of God. By telling you from the Word of God, since the world hated Jesus, and if you are a true follower of Jesus, the world will hate you. You might as well get used to it. And stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop having a Christian pity party. And do what Jesus has commanded you to do. Can somebody say amen? R. W. Dale said, The real truth is that while Jesus came to preach the gospel, his chief object in coming was that there might be a gospel to preach. Can somebody say amen? Although Jesus has been trying to comfort the disciples, he tells them the truth that as they try to carry on with his work after he is gone. The world will hate them. The world will hate them. The world will hate you if you carry on the work that Jesus started. Can somebody say amen? So for those of you who want to be liked by the world, and you want to be on Dancing with the Stars, and you want to be on the Cooking Channel, and uh, you want to be accepted by the world, dear prophet, dear man of God, dear bishop. Uh, I'm here to tell you, no matter how you clean it up, no matter how you put syrup on it, no matter how sweet you try to make it, no matter how you scratch their backs and tickle their ears, they will hate the ground you walk on. As soon as they find out you are following that man named Jesus. Amen, somebody. Even in this, though they can find comfort in the fact that Jesus bore the brunt of the world's hatred first, and oh, did he. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So if the world hates you, 
You know that the world hated me before it hated you. Keep that in mind as you uh, walk merry, merrily along in your Christian walk. Not everyone in the world hated Jesus when he was here, but the world system driven by Satan, the world order driven by Satan as it is today was opposed to him and his message. Even the religious establishment, the religious system showed itself to be a part of the world by its hatred and rejection of Jesus Christ. And by the way, in case you are not aware, that's what's happening in America today. It has already happened in other countries, but America is young, and now our time is coming. The same world system would hate Jesus' disciples. Jesus had called them out of the world and set them apart. They were now citizens of God's kingdom, and the world would see them as the enemy. The Bible exposition commentary says, if they hated Jesus, they will also hate those of us who are identified with him. In the next verse, Jesus quoted a statement he had made earlier, and the logic of it is clear. He is the master. We are the servants. He is greater than we are, so he must receive the praise and glory. But the world will not give him praise and glory. The world hates him, and therefore the world must hate us. The world hates him, and therefore the world must hate us. The world hates Jesus, and therefore the world must hate us. If with all of his greatness and perfection, Jesus does not escape persecution, persecution, persecution and hatred. What hope is there for us with our imperfections, our sins, our failures, our foolishness, end of quote. Jesus' disciples were hated by the world because they carried on Jesus' work. They identified with Jesus. And if you truly identify with Jesus, you might as well understand right now the world's going to hate you. So if you want to be loved by the world, go ahead and get out of this thing right now. Because the world will hate you. When you walk into a room, they will know that you are a Christian. When you get hired onto a job, they will know instantaneously that you are a Christian. You can't hide it. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you compromise your convictions and you try to smooth with the people, they will know that there's something different about you. His name is Jesus. No matter how much you try to fit in with the gang, they will know, no, 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 something about you, man. They'll call you a snitch. They, they, they'll say you must be an informant with, for the police or something, something different about you. And it won't be any of that. It's just that you've been with Jesus. You know Jesus as your Savior. Can somebody say amen? They were a threat to the whole that Satan had over the whole world, uh, over many lives. The world saw them as invaders threatening the established order of things. And I hope you have seen that there are people who don't like the order of things to be uh, disturbed. We see that happening in our world today. In Great Britain, in America, and other places. An order that most people had grown accustomed to. If more people started turning to Christ, then the world system, which was set up and run by Satan, uh, would grow weaker. 
That is why the Jewish religious establishment fought so hard against the early church. They did not want to lose the influence they had over people's lives. There is a very powerful example of the conflict between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world found in the book of Acts. One day the Apostle Paul went to preach in the city of Ephesus. The Bible says that he preached there for three months and many people were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Luke reports that mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. There was witchcraft and dark magic and voodoo being practiced by people in the city and many who became Christians confessed to this. And they confessed their sins and they repented. But not only did they confess and repent, many which used curious arts and voodoo and witchcraft brought their books of magic together and burned them before all men. Now we know, I know a little bit about this based upon this passage when I first got saved. It was about, it was a few months when I started hearing about how rock music is of the devil and, and how they, they were putting messages on the backside of the records. Uh, to sink uh, devilish messages into the hearts of young people. And so one day I had the idea with a group of other young Christians who had gotten saved. We're going to gather up all of our records. Back in the day we are talking about cool in the game. We're talking about confunction. We're talking about Boots' rubber band. We're talking about the Isley Brothers. We're talking about Michael Jackson. We're talking about Elton John. We're talking about David Bowie. And we got together, pulled together all of our records. We had one young lady, bless her heart, I'm not going to say her last name, Sister Janine. She had one or two albums back, bless her heart. <laughs> you say, how do you find out? We went by this year one day, something was playing in the room, and it was an amazing grace. We went out by the church on the back side of the church and built a pile of our records and set it on fire back in the day. Newspaper came out and took pictures of it. I sent it back to my, I sent the newspaper back to my family. They said that nigga done going crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That Bible the messed up his mind. You know how black folk, that's what he say. He out there burning records. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, when the gospel is preached and people are saved, their lives are changed. Amen, somebody. They confess their sins. They repent of their sins. And anything that's not like God, they want it out of their lives. Uh, anyway, in addition to that, the value of the books was said to be 50,000 pieces of silver. I would imagine the albums and records and Eight tracks back in those days. Some of you young people don't know anything about eight, eight tracks. You think that's a track you run on or something. Uh, we, we burned up at least $5,000 worth of records and albums and eight tracks. They burned up much more of their magic foolishness. As Paul continued in the city and as more and more people came to Christ, there was a group of business men and you don't want to rile up the businessmen. You don't want to mess with the man's business. The businessmen got together and they took notice of what was going on. For you see these businessmen were silversmiths 
and they made a lot of money off of the sale of miniature statues of the goddess Diana. Well, with more people turning to Christ and leaving Diana, their market began to shrink. And they noticed this. They began losing money because nobody was buying uh, the false uh, goddess idols of Diana. Demetrius, one of the leaders of the silversmiths, realized what was happening, got his fellow silversmiths together, and they started a riot in the city. Uh, the title, they were, well, as they marched down the street, they said, Diana matters. Diana matters. Diana matters. Diana matters. We'll turn this place out. No justice for Diana, no peace. No justice for Diana, no peace. They started a riot in the city, capturing two of Paul's fellow ministers and dragging them, just like the Negroes are doing today. And when I say Negroes, I'm talking about anybody. Fighting and pulling people and throwing eggs at people. They dragged him into the theater. Paul only escaped capture because some of the other disciples and certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, convinced him not to try to go into the theater. Don't go into the theater, Paul. They'll kill you. Because you're messing with their money. And everybody knows you don't mess with the man's money. You messing with my money now, Paul. All this preaching. We welcome you when you came and let you stay here and preach your gospel for three months. We thought you were going to mean uh, do, do well by us. Well, look at you. You don't turn the whole community upside down with your gospel. And we're broke because of you. Diana matters. Diana matters. We see here that when the gospel is preached, the world system is threatened. And what we have today is we got preachers doing everything but preaching the gospel. And so not only is the world not threatened, Danny, the world has taken over. The world does not even uh, recognize the church anymore because they have lost their power in the world and in the community. Why? Because of sin evil and compromise. So, and when Satan sees his grip on the world loosening, he and his followers will respond with violence and hatred. And that's what we see in the streets today. The world's hatred is, of course, in contrast to Jesus' command for his disciples to love each other and to love the world. Jesus is People are defined by love, a love that compels them to tell the world the truth, even if telling the truth means being hated by the world. Isaac Watts, that great hymn writer, wrote, When I can read my title clear to mansions in the skies, I'll bid farewell to every fear and wipe my weeping eyes should earth against my soul engage and fiery darts be hurled then I can smile at Satan's rage and face a frowning world let cares like a wild deluge come and storms of sorrow fall may I but safely reach my home my God, my heaven, my all. Satan's world system is still at work today, ladies and gentlemen. 
if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a part of that system right now. Today, Christ is offering you the truth of the gospel so that you can be set free from that satanically controlled world. You say, Preacher, how can I get out of that world system and trust Christ as Savior? First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner just as I am and that you have broken God's laws in your life just as I have. You know you have. And I know I have. We are all guilty. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7.20, For there is not a just man, that is, there is not a righteous man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then secondly, accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin. You're aging because of sin. I mentioned that earlier. You're heading towards the grave physically. That's why we have funeral homes. Uh, that's why we have uh, funerals and uh, graveside meetings. We also die spiritually and go to an awful place called hell. And that leads me to uh, my third point. Accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yes, Virginia, there is a hell. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, those who practice voodoo and witchcraft and idolaters and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Fourth, accept the fact, dear friend, that you cannot do anything to save yourself. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen, somebody. You cannot save yourself. You cannot do any amount of work to get saved and go to heaven. That leads me to my fifth point, accept the fact that God loves you more than you love yourself and that he wants to save you from that awful place called hell. He said so in John 3:16. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <clears throat> Dear friend of mine, with these simple truths in mind, please believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. He will help you to repent of your sins and turn from your wicked ways. Just be willing to do so. And pray and ask him to save your soul, to come into your heart, and to save your soul. And he will. I will help you with the prayer. Just mean it from your heart, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. For Romans 10, 9 says, That if thou, that if you, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the way of salvation, my dear friend. Pray with me right now if you're willing to get saved tonight. If you want to be saved right now, repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have broken your commandments and that I deserve hell. 
Please have mercy upon me, a sinner. And forgive me of all of my sins past. And save my soul. As I now believe with all of my heart. That Jesus Christ died for me. Was buried. And rose again. I now believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for my salvation. Lord Jesus please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend of mine, if you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight and you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, according to the Bible, the Word of God, you are now saved from sin and from hell and you are on your way to heaven by the grace of God. And the devil is mad, and God in heaven is glad. Amen, somebody. Congratulations on trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have done the most important thing in life because Jesus Christ paid it all, and all you had to do was believe on him. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospelitesociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man enter, and he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture.